that also talk about brain development, language development, and other things with those books that help gear and get a child ready to go to school. In addition to that, I partnered with the Maternal Wellness Clinic at Maryland Health, so our ladies that are prenatal, yeah. I give them books. And so you get the books before the children are born. Right. So we begin that message before the child even hits the world, how important it is to read and to spend time and to cultivate that because that is laying the groundwork for brain development. And of course, from a psychological background where I come from, yeah. um, brain development happens and is most critical between zero to three. Right, right. So even before a child gets to school and, you know, grade level, we go to school at six or seven yeah, years old, you're yeah. talking about pre-K, you're talking about early well, childhood absolutely. literacy. So before the child even gets into a classroom, it is the uh, process and the priority or should be of the parent to make sure that they are doing that initial groundwork to develop a child, cultivate them, right. and also gear their brains in the area where they want to be, they're getting the skills necessary to be successful in life. It is just such a critical and key component. And it's as simple as Lorna stated, 20 minutes a day. Right. 20 minutes a day. It's not like we're asking you to go out and do a lot of things, and it's very inexpensive. Yes, it is. Books are inexpensive, and you can also take a book, make a book, and that's what we have done in the past is uh, when I work with other programs is to teach a parent how to use the resources necessary. Right. And that's one of the reasons why also the Dear Leadership Coalition, we have no charges to what we do because we want no barriers to right. literacy, which is why we give our books out free, and we do have a specific concentration for that early literacy component with new data out here that would support the fact that a physical book in your hand stimulates you a little bit different than scrolling and i know these kids grow up and they live in a world of scrolling the screens they you know they kind of you know their text messaging is abbreviated thing but there was just something it's something very calming about holding a book in my hand and literally turning the pages at my own pace and just the way my eyes would move on the throughout the throughout the pages and things like that. And I don't, you know, like I said, I would love to know if there's data about that. Doc, later. There is data. Yeah. The uh, a, a, a Reach Out and Read program has data. It originated in um, in Boston. Yeah. Uh, Boston Children's Hospital, and they collected data there even for the digital age, which started yes it shows that touching the book and holding the book some kids will mouth the book yeah at six months old so the books are non-toxic yeah lead in them or mercury or anything uh and it this is even some adults say that when they touch the book it excites them yeah it motivates them to turning the page uh the digital age has kind of it's kind of in a way. Yeah. Now we we don't spell the word properly. <laughs> uh, we don't see the word. Right. We'll say uh, L O L. Okay. What's that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, rather than actually reading the words and understanding the meaning of the words, that's where we are. But I, I think we have to take the visual age and have the kids go to the book. Thank you. And. On their iPad, the school gives them an iPad for the school session. Go and read the book on the iPad. Right. And have the parents come. Right now, we have organizations in the area that are attempting to work with the parents. Right. Uh, 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 Trinity United Church over on, on 20th mm -hmm. uh, uh, received a grant to do similar things, but they reach out to the parents. And they will be reaching out to the parents. Hopefully, the Gary Lindsay Coalition can bring in all these organizations. Right. Because there are others coming up. Uh, my brother's Keeper Alliance under the Obama Foundation yeah. is, is formulating a program also. Uh, 
So if we can get all those into one area, it makes more sense. Yeah. And, and I think that uh, touching the book is important. Yeah. It's yours. Yes. Whereas on the iPad, it may not be yours. <laughs> on the, uh, what's the other one, the old one? <laughs> the the, the, the yeah, Kindles, yeah, the Kindles and all that kind of stuff. Kindle you got to pay for. <laughs> Whereas these books you can get free through various organizations. They'll give you the books. You have the books. Yeah. Available. And so I think touching the book, turning the pages, also it's it's contact. It's contact, and I want to you know I kind of want to what Lauren was talking about as well. And once again, I'm using myself as an example, and, and that is is that part of my reading comprehension and things like that was able to kind of look at the words on the page almost as if they were in some kind of symbolic formation, and that kind of helped me learn to read and. You know, I find myself even now when I'm on my phone or I'm using like my tablet or something like that. It's just, it just feels different. I have to go back a lot more. It's a, it seems like there's a lot more mental work that I have to do than when I can just sit there and read a paper or read something on a page. I think it's also too a lot of books now like the texture. Yeah. There are additional resources and things that help our children develop mentally when it comes to yeah. books. To your point, turning the pages, but even the textures in books, especially for our youngsters, those board books and yeah, things yeah. like that, um, but also helps them develop developing those skills and their pace that they're reading as yeah. well, being able to point to those words on those pages. Um, so lots of different ways um, that students um, and children are, are, again, getting those um, actions early on and building those skills, but to thinking about to Lori's point, you know, the youngsters in zero to three, sometimes it is challenging to get them to sit. But turn that TV off, go in a quiet room, even if they're moving about the room, still read that book to them. They're listening, right. or, they're not, or they'll come back to you and they'll, you'll ask them to point to things on the pages. It also helps with those recognition skills um, and also um, other developmental when it comes to your colors and just all different sorts of, sorts of, sorts of excuse me, developmental aspects. Yeah, very well said, Lori. Go ahead. Research out there, not only about the textile and talk and touch the book, but there is a neurological process yes. from encoding and decoding information that when you are on a computer and you're doing other things, your brain is really multitasking. Yeah. People think that's a great thing, but it's we not. want information in so that we can be able to apologize information so they can go back out again in a useful manner. And so I have read studies where the computer changes the process of learning. And I that believe is that. another reason why our children did not fare well during the pandemic. Yes. Not only because they were not in school, but then they were using electronic devices to do that learning process. And there is a process to learning where the writing of it, yep. because literacy has a lot to do with writing. Yes, of course you can it does. read well, you can write well. Right. And so the ability to write something down, that is another way in which we begin to encode and bring in information with the formation of letters and things of that nature, not to talk about the manual dexterity skills, which are necessary to hold a pencil and things. And so there's a lot of process yep. that is going on. And that is evolutionarily That's how we to learn. Yeah. And and we as a the human race have not evolved enough in this point, because evolution takes millions of years as well, to be able to change that. And so while we are moving toward that, this is a process that happens over hundreds of years, not over we're talking about the last ten years, ten years. We have not edu we have not evolved, evolved that much right. in order to compensate for the electronic. So we do need to it's a wonderful tool. And, and it opens up and has accessibility for a lot of us that we are seeing things and doing things around the world that we never would have known if we don't have the computers, but we need to keep it in terms of a to and in addition, not in, instead of when it comes to the learning process. And biologically and mentally and physiologically, we need it, we still need to write. No. We still need to read and have that book as part of the process and how we acquire information. Now, you know what, Lori, I mean, absolutely. In, in that conversation that you just had with me should have been talked about about 20 years ago, because I think that, you know, as we talk about evolution, I can go down that rabbit hole because I love it. But maybe even as, as soon as 50 years ago, if, if mankind is still around as we know it, somebody's going to look back at this point in time and they're going to look because these children are going to have grown up and they're going to be adults and functioning adults and they're going to look at how these human beings in the west particularly are operating 
you know, once the technology kind of got in, it'd be like almost like some kind of cyborg effect because it's like we're married as humans to these techno technological devices. And I do think it affects our learning. So that's, like I said, I can, I'd love to have more conversation about that. But I want to ask you, you know, we've got the Juneteenth celebration and all that coming up. Gary Literacy Coalition, got anything special coming up? Yes, we do. Now, there you go. That's my cue. The day after Juneteenth, we have our second annual summer social, Light Bites, Libation, and Literacy, which is our mid year fundraiser. And this is how we acquire the funds. Now, when you say libations, what are you talking about? <laughs> libations is just a fancy word for drinking something. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, please. So, um, we have, a, and so one way in which we do this is try to get people out. As Dr. Simpson talked about, it's a partnership. It really is a partnership. This is such a humongous job to be able to make sure that our community stays literate, stays yeah. literate, and everything that has to go with it that it's not a one-person job. It's not the Gary Lewis job. And so from the foundational point of working with all the organizations yeah. in the city, this is how we accomplish building a stronger society, not by ourselves. And so this is just one way in which we need everyone to help us so that we can help you. Yeah. So with our uh, event coming up, it's going to be at the Art House, oh. and it is from 6 to 8 p.m., and uh, we will have a wine book and food tasting. Oh. And the tickets are $65. You must be trying to have me show up there. Please yeah. <laughs> do. And uh, we are featuring the book by Aisha Curry, The Seasoned Wife. Oh, yeah. Steph Curry's wife. Yes. So what is she talking about, cooking? Cooking, and then, of course, just... Um, Lifestyle. Lifestyle and things like that. So there's a lot of valuable information about health yeah. in this book. And so that's another pillar of the Real Literacy Coalition is we do literacy, we do financial literacy, we do health literacy. This is how we make a strong community. And so we are like an octopus with like tentacles. Yeah, yeah. Because it is so important. And so we will be um, having our event. And again, this is our mid year fundraiser. Yeah. This is a non mm -hmm. You can purchase our tickets for the event. Call the office, area code 219. 885-2229 or you may also go online to the Gary Literacy Coalition uh, dot org and you can scan our QR code or go right to the registration button and you can register and pay online. Yeah, and uh, go ahead Dr. Dr. Simpson, go ahead. And those who are not considered literate like me, <laughs> you can bring your money to the door <laughs> <laughs> and pay by tax. Yeah or cash at the door. And I encourage all of us, there are too many of us who are who are literate and well off mm -hmm. to not contribute to a, a, towards an effort to improve things. Uh, if we just sit aside and say, okay, I've served my 50 years in the school system or my 30 years doing this in the steel mills, yeah. come on out, bring yourself, bring your dollars, Listen to what we have to say. It's important. Yeah. Nothing is going to change unless we change it. It's very yeah. A suffering. Yes. And for some reason, someone directed them towards a, a site of, well, you don't have to learn how to be cursive. Yeah. Don't. You don't know how to write. Right. Uh, you can sign your contract like you did in the old days with X, which most of us who are old enough understand what literacy and ability to read mean. Right. Some young folks don't understand that if you can't read it, you're going to be a slave to something. Yes. For the rest of your life. Something or somebody. Yeah. And they say, well, a slave, well, no, I'm, well, I mean, no, you, you manage, you've been managed by something that you have no control over. Right. And your life is, is destined by... The true definition of the word slave, absolutely. And lack of being able to read is a uh, put you in a slave category. Mm -hmm. So come on out, please come on out, all you teachers out there who are cruising for the summer. <laughs> I know there are reading programs going on in, in 23 different sites. Come on out. Uh, you can bring your spouse, bring your guests. But this is a fundraiser, and it's to improve the efforts uh, for this organization to function and to continue to try to bring things together as far as literacy is concerned in the city of Gary. The state has said, I, I should say the governor has said, reading at a level by the third grade is important to the state. Yes. For economic reasons. 
because if we're trying to upgrade to a uh, non-manufacturing society, yeah. uh, you have to be able to read at the third grade as a break point. Yes. So now we're saying it's a concern of the state, it's a concern of the Obama Foundation, it's a concern of the teachers' union, it's a concern of everybody. Come on out, support us. Uh, your funds will not go to waste, and we will show you where the funds go. Uh, we have a great board, uh, a great fiduciary uh, agent as well. So come on out and, and support this organization. Uh, in November, we'll have our major fundraising. Yeah. Uh, right now, we have to get this one step by step, and uh, every contribution helps. If you can't come, still contribute. Well said, Guy. And I just kind of want to add because we, we've talked about this on the show often, and you know, I've seen this over in Europe, I see it, I see it here, I just see it in mankind, and that is it's, it, reading is essential. I mean, you can go out here, you can be good at math, you can be good at this, and I'm kind of stealing this from the superintendent who we'll be talking with a little later on in the day, but when she came here, one of her presentations that she made uh, and one of the commitments she made for the Geary Community Schools going forward, she said they're going to focus on reading because that is the foundation of everything. And I just kind of, you know, I, I, I talked with my wife who's a linguist, uh, you know, speaks German and things like of that nature. And the ability to communicate is essential. You, I mean, it's the building block of everything we do. And you have to read in order to be able to communicate. So what you all are doing is absolutely valuable. And the community should get involved with this, as you all point out, because, you know, if we're trying to go out here and save our kids and, and, and have our kids do well, and, you know, it's getting uber competitive out here right now with the global markets and all those kind of things, you've got to be able to read at the base, you know, just at a, at, a, at a grade level, at your grade level. You need to be able to read well in order to go out here and, and compete. So we appreciate you. Anything, any last words, young ladies? Go ahead, Laura. No, we're just super excited to bring this um, event to our community. We want to be able to connect with our supporters more than just once a year. So please come out, as Dr. Simpson said, bring your friends, bring your relative, bring your spouse. Um, it's a great uh, occasion where, like I said, we're going to have literacy, light bites, libations. Yeah. Chef Tim is cooking up a great menu wow. for us. You guys will not be disappointed. And Running Vines Vineyard um, is our featured um, winery. So lots of great um delicious libations and we are going to be raffling over 30 bottles of wine so opportunity to take wine home with you as well so like we said bring your friends bring your relatives come out and have a great um evening and support the area literacy this is the day after tomorrow day after tomorrow so thursday june 20th 6 p.m at the art house go ahead Lauren. Yes, and everyone who comes to the event um, while supplies last, we really want to have a sold out crowd. Yeah. We'll get to take home the book, The Season Life by Oh, Okay, good stuff. So it's a win win all the way around in addition to the wine. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Great food, great wine, and a great company. And a great cough. Yes. Chef won't be there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. With that being said, I want to thank you, Gary Lewis and Corbin. Go ahead. And just mark your calendar yeah. because as we talk about it and we talk about the summer slide, Gary Lewis and Coalition will have their annual summer book off, which will be oh. July 20th at the St. Timothy Community Church from 10 to 2 p.m. That is an opportunity for all members of the family, adult and children, to come out and get some books to add to your at home library. No, and you know, I always ask you to do this before you live, leave. If there are organizations, organizations out here because like I said you you could be doing another you you all are great at partnering but I want to tell organizations who might be listening if you have an event it's always great to have Lori and some of your your volunteers in the front in the lobby or whatever kind of talking or giving away books educating people how can organizations partner with you all okay so we have to reach out to the Gary Literacy Coalition they can do it via email at glc720 yeah. at sbcglobal.net they can call our office at 219-885-2229, or they can also do an inquiry over the website at GaryLiteracyCoalition.org. We do ask that people, when they're asking for donations and help, that they give us at a minimum a two-week advance. Yeah, I remember you saying that. books <laughs> are, uh, we have a lot in inventory, but a lot goes in. They go back out. Right. And the sooner that you let us know, the sooner 
that um, we can help you accommodate whatever needs you're going to have. And in addition to that, we also ask for a handwritten letter. We want you to see the plans that community and organizations are using when they're using our materials. Right. That, we have. that goes for us to have information to go back to our funders when we talk about this is what we've done with our money. And then, too, as we're moving forward, this is what we like to do and this right. is the needs of the community. So absolutely a handwritten letter via email or uh, sent to the office is uh, necessary and crucial when requesting supplies from us. Well said. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That was pretty awesome. Uh, once again, Gary Lucy Coalition, their fundraiser, well, not their main fundraiser, but one of their kind of mid, uh, mid year fundraisers is going to be placed on the 20th. That is the day after June 6 p.m. over at the House, 8 social media, to go out there and support.